he's kind of fucking John Connor well, of yeah. this whole thing. Kind of like, yes, but it's... <laughs> That's a that's a fun way of looking. Well, at he's it. not yeah. fucking John Connor. He is John Connor. The, don't get the people wrong. Like you yeah, because that would make Cat John Connor. So you're right. So <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or is Neil John Connor? And that's a that's they're a all John Connor. They're, they're all John. They're all John Connor. In I, death, we are all John, John Connor. Connor. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of I Finally Watched. This is David um, and Alon. I just want to give you a gesture and a word. Tenet. Uh, I hear with that word you can get into uh, a lot of doors. As long as you have a high viz vest as well, yes. And I finally watched Tenet. And today we're here with a very special guest, Anthony. I know you because you follow... Uh, our podcast page on Twitter, but you're actually like our third follower ever. Oh, wow. I did um, it. Yeah, you did it. Um, but yeah, no, we, I, we've been following each other for like uh, almost three years yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I've seen a bunch of your stuff. You've seen a bunch of my stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I just love all your tweets. They're just always really funny and on point on topic most of the time. Um and so I was like, you know, and you have a great interest in not only just writing all sorts of things, but uh, you talk a lot about films and movies. Oh, yeah. And so I reached out to you a couple, a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, oh, at, saying you want to come on here and talk about a movie. And it I took us a little bit. That right? was pretty hilarious. Like, I felt I felt like such a jerk for a minute because I was just like, guys, I want to be on your show. I felt like <laughs> I've seen this list of movies and I don't know what to do about it. I, uh, Alan told me to come up with a list. So I went to my dad's house where I have all my movies still. <laughs> and I went through like 50. And he's like, he's seen all of them. I was like, what the hell are we supposed to do? <laughs> it's so funny. Like, I mean, you can't see that side of my room, but it's literally all just DVDs and Blu-ray. So like, that's, you know, my whole life has just been like, I, I wanted to write movies as a kid. So I was just like obsessed with watching everything. So I'm like, yeah, I felt bad. But I was like, all right, do you have anything else? Like, what else do we have? Well, thankfully, there was a pandemic. And so not a lot of people saw Tenet. Yes, that's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, as much of a Christopher Nolan fan, I am. I just never got around to it because I heard a lot about a, uh, a lot of mixed reviews on it. So that I was just like, eh, maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. But then when we finally came up with uh, that's the movie we're going to do, um, I was like, oh, man, perfect. Because David and I talked about doing more Christopher Nolan stuff, right. Tenet included. And so this is kind of like and, and I think it's a it's a perfect movie to do this with. Uh, because it's great for discussion. It's amazing for discussion, I feel like. So, Anthony, writer, comic book artist, Twitter extraordinaire user. Uh, Do you want to just kind of give us a little intro to you and what you do? Yeah, my name's Anthony. I'm a writer, like you said. I, I write... Mostly, I write comic books. I, you know, I, I, I dabble in other things. I read sc- screenplays. I'm, uh, you know, I, I write a little bit of everything. But for the most part, I, I'm a podcaster. I am on the We Have Issues podcast every Wednesday. You can find us on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash We Have Issues podcast. I'm also I play a very silly, ridiculous bard in the uh, real play Dungeons and Dragons podcast, Critically Stupid. Uh, people seem to like that. But yeah, that's that's primarily what i do in my life otherwise i host a weekly movie night where a group of people get together and watch terrible movies and make bad jokes during it and it's it's called good time bad movie you can find that on twitter as well that's what i do in my time that's that's a long stream world is to just watch bad movies and make (laughs) jokes about it that's like when we started hanging out and watching movies together that's what he wanted to do yeah you should join us on thursday it's so much fun like oh my gosh tomorrow i'll take you up on that Tomorrow we're watching the uh, 1991 uh, Captain America movie. Oh, and okay. it, he, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that one, but the suit that he wears has rubber ears. It, he, it's Captain America with a suit with rubber ears, and it looks terrible. It's I can't wait to watch it. I'm so excited, um, but it's going to be really bad. 
like, they're all really bad. Every movie we watch is terrible and basically unwatchable if you're not with good friends making terrible jokes. So that's, what we that's do. the only way. That's the yeah. only way to tolerate them. I mean, David, David kind of undercuts it. We we became friends. Oh my God, David, what is it? Seven years ago? Six yeah, years 20, ago? 2017. What yeah. was the thing? What was the like? What was the glue? What, what oh, bonded? you're going to love this. It was Pokemon Go. Was it? Was it really? Yeah. Meet, how, wait, was it like a meet cute at a Poke stop? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we were, we were doing a raid and my wife was there. And then she sees Alon's girlfriend at the time, now wife, sitting in a car. And she's like, why is she allowed to sit in the car? And I can't sit in the car. Why do I have to be outside? <laughs> so you went over to him and beat him up for making you look bad. Like, how yeah. dare you? <laughs> yeah. And then the, yeah. And then we, uh, I mean, then we just started hanging out and watching yeah. movies and, um, awesome. Alan like wanted to do bad movies, and so I didn't want to do bad movies. So when I didn't it was want my to turn, do bad movies. No, 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 no. No, yeah, yeah, you did. You wanted to do Birdemic. Oof. I just wanted to do like one or two bad movies because you had fun with. So we ended up, we ended up not doing. Okay, we watched The Room, but we ended Ooh. up um, reviewing uh, The Disaster Artist instead. Right, and I think that was a good move because this The yeah. Disaster Artist is actually a good. Movie. Oh, yeah, it's actually fun to watch. It's actually um, good, yeah. But then I feel like you don't get any of the jokes if you don't watch The Room. Yeah. It's fair. So I had them watch The Room, and I think we had fun with that. And you can shut up, because you show me a lot of bad movies, too. And also, The Room is like the only bad movie I've ever showed you. So, eh. Well, no, so then when it was my turn to choose a bad movie, I chose Bloodsport. And it just okay. sort of, like, tricked them to where they were like, oh, wait, no, this is a... It's, like, bad, but actually good yeah. and, like, enjoyable. Yeah. Um, like everything about that movie's, we're gonna do it in the next couple of weeks. But okay. everything about that movie is awesome, except like the acting. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's where it's where it's missing. Um, do you guys want to get into Tenet? Uh, yeah, sure. So I was the only one that saw this before we, I guess, did it for this week, right? Um, this came out during the pandemic, and my wife and I got a babysitter and went to the theater, and we're the only people in the theater, wow. <laughs> so had it to ourselves to watch this. Um, which was awesome and also sad, like at the same time, of course. Yeah. And I remember like the first viewing being like, it was good. I, I feel like there's so much more to understand that I missed. Yeah. And, but like watching it this time, I realized like the stuff that I thought I didn't understand, he sort of just kind of glosses over, like how the backwards works is not explained like ever. It's like reverse mm. entropy. It was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Okay. That's it. Well, yeah. I, I was actually going to say guys, like, like, this is, and a lot of Chris Nolan movies are like this, but it's kind of one of those movies where it's like, oof, it's kind of hard to talk about your first watch because there's a lot to digest and a lot to go through. And I'm like, ooh, I want to watch it at least twice so I feel like I understand more. However, he gives us the perfect out where he's like, don't think about it, just feel it. And I'm just going to say, it was fine. I felt it. I felt it. I enjoyed it. It was a nice ride. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when, so I watched this alone and at the end of the movie, I was like, okay, this is a pretty damn good movie i i just i i really liked it right off the bat and immediately after i finished it i started it over again and yep. i watched like maybe the first 20 minutes again and i was right. like maybe i can understand more of what's happening so oh god i'm sorry i don't mean to interrupt no no go ahead what i was gonna say so for me the first 20 minutes were the part where i was like i don't know how i'm gonna feel about this movie because <laughs> it starts off because of course it starts off with a bang but i was just like oh man these people were coming in like stomping on cellos like i need some answers here like why are why do they hate instruments so much why are they so mad at this band you know? I, I i will say like the the opening scene the opera scene is so it feels so contained as far as like um christopher nolan goes because like if oh, you yeah. if you think of the opening scene for the dark knight it's like mm -hmm. it's a bank there's a lot of moving pieces you got the joker's henchman on the roof you got some in the vault you got some in the in the right. bank lobby so it's like you go back and forth and it just feels very big Mm -hmm. But with this, everything is happening in this one location, um, and it seems just very um, focused. And at first, I didn't know how to feel about it. But then when the I understood why they do it, did it because the rest of the movie is feels so big and so large that you have to like kind of focus the audience into like one thing to like just grab mm -hmm. their attention. And then kind of like I think this movie does a really good job in explaining the movie as the movie is progressing so that it doesn't have to spell everything out in like one long expedition expedition exposition exposition thank you um spiel 
I right? mean, it was an expedition too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Um, and and it, I think it does a really good job at that. Well, and the the one thing too is if you're not really paying attention or kind of just like enjoying it at a surface level, you don't even realize how the opening ties into the rest of this movie. Right. The fact that those are Sator's men, exactly like, storming yeah. this place, like it, it almost doesn't even make any sense. Like, well, that's it, that's why I, I took like two pages of notes on that first twenty <laughs> minutes, and because I was going to comment when he was saying, I was like, look, it takes place in one place, but when you start, when you watch it, and you're like, okay, some of these are actual SWAT members, some of these are pretend SWAT members, some of these are actual terrorists, but are they real terrorists? You know, so then it's just like, what is actually happening? Why is it happening? Who are we following? And this, so, so I was just like how much of this is going to be integral to understanding what happens next? You know, and that was, it was kind of, the, there's a crazy moment in the beginning where you see um, John David Washington come in pretending to be SWAT with his team. And he's standing with the real SWAT and right. you see people with gas tanks moving in the background. Yeah. And on first watch, you get that they're um, going to gas the inside of the opera and put everyone mm -hmm. to sleep. But then the terrorists are kind of wise to that. So they put on the probably something to do with time travel, but they put on um, the masks uh, on my second rewatch of this scene. I was like, are they trying to make us feel like there's uh inverse here? Right. Because like with the right. oxygen. Well, I thought they're I thought they were just sort of alluding to it. But what like really it's just they're about to be gassed. And so because I originally. <laughs> When I watched it the second time, I was like, all right, so they know the gas is coming, but why do they wait to put the mask on? And then I realized like, oh no, they're, they're being attacked. They are, these are just Sator's men who are trying to get this one piece mm -hmm. who do end up getting it. We find out in like a, just a little aside, he's like, did my men make it clear? Like, no, some private Russians got him. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, there's just private Russians like looking for this weird relic thing. But then are the Russians inverted and are they like the B team hired by they say to her with the what is it called the pincer well, some move? of them are well some of them are right but the guy who puts on is you, well, they need obviously they, they need the oxygen the whole time if they're inverted so he couldn't have been if he, yeah the one guy that we see but it's also yeah i mean it's also just kind of a ruse because this movie does a really cool thing of like slowly showing you the inversion yes like in the in the opera scene you don't really notice it and then yeah. in um like i forget what's next i have it in my notes but we'll get to it but then there's the next scene and then when he goes um, and it, after the initial car chase to get this 241 right. part, when you see the inverted version, then it's like completely you understand how it works. Yes. And then the final scene, it's like everything's explained to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, well, the, after the opera is the train torture thing. Um, <laughs> but before we get there, can we talk about that? Like that saying that they say to each other that like code spy code oh, we word. live in the twilight world yeah yeah that's i is that is that that's how the cia does it i imagine right yeah it's the cia thing i i did like there was a one scene later on i don't want to get too far ahead but like there was a one scene later on where Sater kind of says to him you know uh, yes the twilight world, and i was like oh he's trying to get him you know and then he he acts like he doesn't know what's going on you know what he's talking about he kind of like plays it off like he's not cia but also you know just that was interesting just What's, and it's also Sator just, I keep like fucking really yeah. fucking emphasizing the last part of his name, but I Sator do. says, um, it's him saying like, I know everything, I know. right? Like I'm way fucking ahead of you on all of this. Yes. And I, I love that. I, um, yeah. I, it is confusing at the end because once you realize that the protagonist is the founder of Tenet, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, he hires. Wait, what? His, <laughs> yes. he, yeah he hires himself and everything like that it, okay so when he takes the cyanide pill that wasn't a cyanide pill and he has that guy who wakes them up on the ship who i'm like guessing is like right. lead operator for the cia and he does the finger intertwine right gesture later on when i believe it's robert pattinson that does the finger intertwine gesture and you find out that you know maybe the protagonist is in the future a lot older but like more has more power right it, it kind of like what comes first chicken or the egg does he learn this who teaches it to the cia guy who then goes to hire him from robert pattinson or does robert pattinson you see like did he learn everything he knew from robert pattinson because he hired him way in the 
right future or however you want to look at that or is he coming up with it presently and then i guess but then i guess that forms a paradox but i think it's cool how this movie kind of makes you think in that way and it, the movie even says you have to start looking at life differently you know yeah you can't think about it you have to feel it uh, what are you doing? You're failing right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nolan would hate you. No. Yeah, that's true. Clemens Posey told us how to do this too. You know what I mean? She's <laughs> like, as you just keep saying, like, just feel it. Uh, which is just, it's funny. Yeah. The director's just like, to stop trying to yeah. diagnose this. This is not going to work. I, I like that. Um, did either of you recognize the Russian guy that's pulling out his teeth? No. Oh, what was he from? Limitless. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, the Russian guy who okay. like takes the pill the one time yeah. and is like a pain in the ass to yes, uh, yes. Bradley oh Cooper. Yes. That's amazing. That scene. So, so the torture scene, I was just, cause I'll tell you guys, I didn't know. I didn't know what the actual plot of this movie was. I didn't know there were, I didn't know there was any sort of like time travel, uh, supernatural, like, or sci-fi element to it. Exactly. Okay. I just, all I knew about it was that it was Christopher Nolan and it seemed like a spy espionage sort of thing. And that was actually why I was a little reluctant to watch it. Cause I was like, I really like Chris Nolan. I don't really care about spy movies that much. Same reason I was like a little reluctant about Dunkirk. Cause I was like, I don't really care that much about war movies. Although I, you know, I can appreciate a good one, you know, but it's like, but I didn't know what the plot of this movie was whatsoever. I never watched a trailer for it. And then I was like, oh, this is a good excuse to watch that almost three hour Chris Nolan movie I've been wanting to watch. So I was like, <laughs> all right, here we go. And then we put it on. And I was just like, oh, how is he going to get his teeth back? This is the protagonist. I was just like, what is happening? Why is this guy? Now he has no teeth in this movie. What's Is this movie about dentistry? <laughs> like, what is that? And then they literally are just like one line. They're like, oh, yeah, we rebuilt your mouth while you were sleeping. No big deal. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and, it, it questions how long he was in that coma, too. Yeah. Well, and they're like, yeah, it was a test. So does that dude work for the CIA? That that's mm -hmm. the Russian guy is just the teeth puller. He's well, and also the guy who tells him that his name is Faye in the movie, which I don't know how you're supposed to fucking know that. Yeah. But um, he's like other people have tried to take this test and failed it. So he's like he has had his teeth pulled and yeah. not passed. <laughs> yeah, they only gave me some of them back. I only yeah. got like half my teeth. <laughs> The, um, the the thing about that and it it makes you think about the ending of this film too when oh when Sa yeah, has the pill I was Sater has that. the pill he goes it's CIA issue and then you're like well is the pill fake and if the pill is fake then there is absolutely no uh, horribleness in this film that you know he would fall into a coma just like uh, the protagonist did. And then he would, but his heart would still beating. Therefore, it would never go off. Mm -hmm. Well, no, but I mean, so I th those, you know, those type of pills do exist, right? So, I mean, they could have given John David Washington a fake one, but right. then like he had a real one, right? There's a line in the movie that says, I got the, oh my God, it's so specific. And I feel like it's, a, it's something like I got this from a CIA friend. He says something along that, those lines. And it makes you really think. Well, did he take is, it off? Of, did he take it off of one of the guys that was escaping from the Ukraine job? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That maybe. yeah. So yeah, it could have been. And so yeah, maybe he would have never known. And th there's also just this idea that we'll get into later in the movie. At, but one point, John David Washington's like, "Well, if we're still here, doesn't yeah. that mean we win?" And Robert Pattinson's like, "Not necessarily." But then the movie for the rest of the movie explains to you, no, yes, necessarily yes, because yeah. we're still here. They like play with this like, oh, the future doesn't believe in the grandfather paradox and like we can still control things. But right. everything is controlled by like the fate of the movie, the parts we've already seen. So it's like the mm. movie tries to like play with what we normally think about these like paradoxes mm -hmm. and going to the future and the past, but then sort of in practice just exactly aligns with it almost. Well, y yes, but then it kind of like try to pull uh, like an Avengers Endgame where you're like, if you remove one stone from the timeline, it branches off into an alternate reality. So I think what they were trying to say is that if that future places the bomb in the past and it goes off, then it would branch off into a catastrophic timeline. But their timeline, the one that they're set in, that the, the one that they're they're uh like rested in the point of time 
that still stays the same. They would just F up this branch off. That's how I took it. Well, it's, it's tough because I mean, we see absolutes. Like we see that the, obviously throughout the whole movie, the, the past or the future affects the past and the past effect, you know, like it is one solid uh, timeline. Like cat, sees herself dive off the you know right. dive off the ship it's not right. you know it, that that's all the same timeline you know that, so. that's all the same timeline but it's not like i don't know if you've seen looper but oh, yeah, it's like course. okay so it's like when the guy is being disfigured right he, his his future yes. self is getting scarred yes. right yeah, it's yeah. not like that it's not yeah. like an automatic cause and effect thing it's like it, it's happening uh simultaneously and i think right. that's best represented in the in the end scene with the mm-hmm. whole war going on right it's like the and and that's confusing as hell too because there's a scene where you uh <laughs> rob pat is seeing the guy set the uh mine the mm-hmm. trip wire and yet then he has to be inverted to go and to try to stop them from going into the tripwire. And I was right. like, oh, my God, I can't even understand that. Yeah, I, there is a lot of scenes. There are a lot of scenes like that, like the, the gate scene with the, the I, I, you know, the when he gets shot like that scene. I watched that 400 times. I literally that was the only scene in the movie. I went on YouTube and I was like, I need to watch like a diagram of how this worked forward and backwards because I don't understand how he got in there and closed the door when it was locked and then opened it like, you know, so I just like, I watched that scene so many times. I was just like, okay, this is insane, but I love this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, That was the part that was the most confusing part to me. And I think also, I mean, I want to talk about more in the end, but like the Robert Pattinson part where he, at the end is kind of safe. Right. And then he's like, Oh, I have to go back in. And they're like, he's like, why? No, like it worked. He's like, well, we can't take the chance that it actually worked. And it's like, he knows he's going to die. Of course. But it, and it's it's part of it is like, I think you could take it either way, the way Alon's saying where it's like, if he doesn't die, then maybe it creates this alternate reality where right. things are getting destroyed. But then on the other hand, it, it could go the other way where he's like, this is just how it is. And it's like, there's no way to fight it. And it's already happened. So me, like, yeah. I have to go in there because it's just what happens. I yeah. can't do anything about it. Well, um, well the, the only... <laughs> I think it's so interesting, like the free will and, you know, determinism situation happening in that moment, especially, especially like at the end. So it's like they like uh, the protagonist experienced him dying there, but it would only happen if he goes back later. Like, had he not gone back later, he wouldn't have been there to sacrifice himself to die to open the gate. So like he had to actually do that because it happened, which is hilarious. And that's what they're playing with is the fact that, you know, an action Mm. created the cause which is crazy. Well, here's an even more complicated grandfather paradox. Yeah. Here's the more complicated way of looking at it too, is that when he is on the battlefield and he gets reinverted. So he's, he's correct now with, Mm -hmm. with everyone else. Racist. Uh, (laughs) uh, the dead body that he is, is inverted. Because he right. rises back up from the dead to, mm-hmm. to take the bullet, um, so that means that when he leaves uh, the protagonist at that moment, I guess he goes back to get inverted, and then the whole thing plays yep. for him. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that so we never even see his dead body. Oh. That's why that scene's so confusing. We never see his dead body get killed. No, we so. we do. Well, no, we see it get unkilled. But in order for him to get killed, he has to go back in and oh, be inverted oh. again. So you're saying like he's basically the, killed twice. It's the same moment, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, we just never it differently. Yeah, he, we never. He never experiences it going forward in the red direction, apparently, which is forward, mm-hmm. and the blue direction is in the past. the The other thing that it, the the confusing part, and I don't want to get bogged down in, but the thing oh, that confuses, that's the confusing. Yeah, go no, ahead. no, I'm about to say the confusing part is yeah. like it feels like. It feels like when they go into this machine, they go into this alternate timeline for a little bit where they have to go back. Yeah. But that like the real them might still be going, but it doesn't. And so like how it connects back up to where like if they go back in the past for a week and then they have to catch back up, mm-hmm. they're simultaneous with themselves. Oh, my God. They're, it was- and so and so when do they connect back up? Do they have to fuck? Like how do they? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, well, they, they're no, very you... clear about not touching. So yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but <laughs> you see that probably though. for that reason. Yeah, <laughs> like, we know what you're going to get up to if we let you touch. Don't do it. I mean, how can I not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fun fun fact: condoms invented by the Tenet Corporation. Ugh, no. Um, no, but the the I think that is best represented and shown in the airport scene mm-hmm. when they get back to it. And then you start seeing that fight sequence in the invert inverted real time, right? Oh. And then well, it's almost like, it, it's almost like a yo yo. So he goes yeah. well, he goes past it, well, ho- hold and on. then if comes you, back it, it, and then like, but I don't know how it connects back up. Yeah, if you shut up for a minute, I can explain. I don't it think to you. you're not going to explain it in a way that makes sense to me. I'm just going to tell you right now. But go ahead. <laughs> Look, Shall all right, it. all right. They are two days in the past, right? Sure. Okay. So he has to, like you say, yo-yo back through that fight scene into the machine. So when you first look at that scene, it looks like, because you, you're not supposed to know that's John David Washington anyways. But right. when you look at that scene, it looks like he's trying to shoot himself, but he's dodging out of the way of the bullets. But then when you see it in his time, he's actually purposely missing him, mm-hmm. right? Which I think is one of the cool moments of the film. Oh, yeah, it's really cool. Um, but when he gets back into the machine and it reverts his way and he runs past, uh, um, I was going to call him Diego, Neil, Neil, um, our pets, Batman, um, when he does that and he runs past him, he has to go back to meet the other our pat to say, Hey, it's good. But then it's kind of confusing, right? Because when he's like, Hey, it's good. It's in reverse. But I guess that our pat just understands inverted language or he no, no, like he gets no. it you mean the r pats that is carrying to bicky yeah no no the, he's he's back to being not yet it's when does he say it's good okay so he runs out to tell uh, the inverted r he's not inverted anymore right he went through the machine so yeah. he runs out to tell r pat it's good go ahead go ahead and invert both of you and then she goes through and then comes back out yes Right. Well, and I actually figured out why you're talking how it works is so like. See, I told you I'd help. No, I mean, maybe. So like they're go, you know, he's going forward and then he reverses and comes back and then his other person's going forward. And as soon as they get to the point where he first inverted, then it's there's just one John David Washington again. So it's like a loop and then going forward and then it connects off because that one John David Washington is always going to go through the loop. And come back. So that's how that's not infinitely going on. Alon's head just exploded. I, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Draw you a map. After a this, bit. I'm going to draw a map. Well, hold like on. The most I, fun about this is yeah. I'm going to be drawing diagrams for the next three days and just going through <laughs> various scenes and going, why did I watch this movie? Uh, um, so let's like get a little bit back on the present timeline. Um, Which and one? I, Shut the fuck up. So Anthony, uh, Alon, like during the day was like sending me some of your tweets about this. Oh yeah. I had the same thoughts about like how secretive everything is in the beginning. Yeah. Like first of all, they take him to a windmill. Yeah. To, like, hang out. <laughs> it's absurd. Like that. And that was like, I was saying, I didn't know what the plot of this movie was. And as I was watching it, I was like, why are they treating it? Like it's a Dungeons and Dragons campaign or like a video game. Like, it feels like you go to one location, you get this tiny sliver of a like puzzle piece. I'm like, this is all an email. Send this man an email. <laughs> well, and then he gets off of the windmill, which, first of all, he uh, at one point is doing pull-ups on the ladder in the windmill, yeah. and he decides to go 50 feet in the air to yeah. then start doing the pull-ups. It was like three uh, rungs, and you're like, good. Like, what do we do? Yeah. It's kind of a safety issue. Then he gets out of the windmill, takes the boat to shore, has a guy get out of a car that he gets into, and then he goes to a place, sneaks in, uh clements posey who clements posey who plays the um the lady scientist uh, scientist. barbara is her name although i don't know how we know that and uh she's like no small talk i don't and all of that is like i was like this is so fucking weird until like you realize that they're susceptible to attacks from the future right so knowledge 
is That's like think, yeah. th- is the weapon against them. So it all makes sense, but it seems so comical as you're like watching this movie. Well, I also I do find it pretty hilarious though that like okay, are you saying that no one from the future they can get like we live in a twilight world, like they can figure all those things out, but they can't figure out this and the fact that people keep randomly using the word tenant. You know, I'm like come on, I'm pretty sure that guy was really smart. You know, Sater is a smart guy. He's a piece of garbage, but he's a smart piece of garbage. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't crack that code. I think um, one of the strongest points of this film is how bad Sater is written. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't mean like he's badly written. I mean, he well, is like an evil motherfucker, right? And so to show that and, and how they show that throughout the film, it's like you're just spending your entire time watching this movie and being like, I want this guy dead. Uh-huh. And I think that's like, it feels really good when that happens. Like Like the ending feels like, you as the audience just feel really uh, good about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But what I find so interesting and I had to look this up is there's something, and I know Anthony, you found it because you posted it on Twitter and I was mad at you because I was like, Oh damn it. But the Sater square, it's really interesting. It's really cool. When you look at it, really cool. And David, if you don't know, there's like, like the, no, the five words or whatever, five words with a stone tablet, but they, um, they come up, uh in the movie like all five words come up in the movie and i think yeah, it's the, like satyr arepo tenet um opera opera, opera and then rossat yeah it's yeah. a palindrome right yeah yeah and the the fact that like each of those is connected between like satyr and the um Ro- rotas right yeah that's it. um rotas company is the company that he founded and then you have um, opera, and then Arepo, which kind of don't it's have anything fake. to do with each other. Yeah, Arepo is the forgery guy, and then opera is the location of that happens. The coolest thing about Tenet, and I didn't really think about this until I I saw it, but at the end, when both the red and the blue, the inverted and the non, both had ten minutes to do what they needed to do, Tenet is ten ten, but palindrome of 10 10 so you have 10 going forward and 10 going backwards and that's mm-hmm. that mirrors the the ending battle yeah no i agree yeah, i was like yeah, no one nice. cool well so arepo is the guy who makes fakes and right. then the opera was a fake opera it wasn't the ukrainian opera it was also in estonia so maybe that's what it means i doubt it and uh, apparently that place was like abandoned for 10 years. So they had to like, they built so much shit for this. They built real buildings for that final scene to blow up. They really That's crashed crazy. a plane. Um, I, I read that they were, um, they were looking to like do miniatures and then just found a bunch of abandoned planes. So like it might be more efficient to just crash a real plane. Wow. Which they, they were did. thinking of doing it. The plane crash, they were thinking of doing a CGI and they actually found out that it was cheaper to crash a real plane. That's, that's probably true, yeah. That's and nice. it would look better than like a Marvel movie. So they're like, let's yeah. just do it this way. Yeah. So, um, so let's get back to it. I, 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 I like how little they explain the Clements Posey character is supposed to be like explaining this to you. And she's just like, as we've said, inverted entropy. Don't think about it too much. And then oh you start God. bringing up the, the free will versus fate stuff. And she's like, well, it wouldn't have happened if your glove wasn't there, which I do think like, the more you watch that scene, the more you do understand it once you've seen the rest of the movie, the more right. that she is telling you. But just it, it's like going right. to like a, a training where you're like, well, I've never had to use this in real life. So it's like I'm not I don't even understand how to listen to it. Like you don't of understand course. how to listen to what she's telling you. I felt that oh, I felt the same way until we get to like a, about that halfway point or a little bit past that. And I was like, oh, everything makes a lot more sense now with the way that you're you're they're describing it and what the way that you're seeing it it's playing out in front of us um especially once he actually goes back with it for the first time but that scene in particular piss in particular pissed me off so much just because i was like he needs i know she says don't think about it but that wouldn't stop me or any person <laughs> from asking a million questions it, like i just wanted him at the very least to you like to catch a bullet and then shoot it again immediately to see if you can do it like double like a like because now it's in the gun I want yeah. to, you know, like I just shot, I just got it. I want to shoot it. I was like, how did he not do that? And why didn't we see that happen in the movie? Like, you know, I was just like, oh, I'm just because the bullet itself was inverted, not him at that moment, you know? So he, right. did for, you know, he could have shot the bullet. 
Although you have to kind of. I don't of, think he could have because the. No, I don't think he could have. But that's it's, the question, and he doesn't try, and that's. Uh, like, well, he should have tried. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, if you I have agree a gun, with that. If you have a gun, like it's. I guess it's a like deterministic question where it's like, um, if you if a guy goes back in time and he's like, you know, and tries to shoot someone, suddenly the gun won't work. Suddenly it's clogged or something. You know, like like fate won't allow it to happen. I was like, well, how do you? How would you explain that? Like, if he can't. Well, it's fire kind the- of like, it, it, well, the biggest fault of of her character explaining this to him is she gives no explanation about the machine that goes that you can invert people with right (laughs) and so it it, the film tries to kind of make up for that so aaron taylor johnson she might not even know about it not even know but the film knows okay (laughs) and (laughs) she should have read the script is what we're saying read the script (laughs) no but what i'm saying is that the the film makes up for that so when aaron taylor johnson comes on and they're in that red and blue room. He says to the protagonist, listen, you can't go into the machine unless you see your other half go into the machine on the other side. And that kind of answers your question, Anthony, where it's like, well, what if you're about to go into the machine, but then you look over and your and your body double isn't there? Then something is, a, you know, for a fact that something is about to stop you from going to that machine. So either you're about to get shot or you're about to get pulled back by someone. So I think that's like, yeah, well, it's there's chick- like, it's, it's a chicken and the egg thing, right? Like yeah. the, you know, the inverted the egg or whatever, whichever way you want to go. And it's like, you don't see it. So you don't go, but you don't go because you, you don't didn't go it. because right. you weren't inverted. Um, one thing that you, Anthony, what you just said that made me think is like, you know, she's like, Oh, the bullet wouldn't have come to your hand if you didn't put your hand there, if you didn't drop it. But that's like, he, could any hand have done it or only his? Only his. Could, because he he wasn't holding the bullet. Like that's what that's how time would work. He didn't put the bullet in his pocket later. He was like, oh, now I have it. Now it's on the ground. That's right. just a flying bullet. That's just a magic. Well, bullet. What I'm saying, yeah, because if he puts it back down, he could do it again. And then also, like, uh, for for, uh, for a bullet for a bullet. Hold on, for a bullet to be reverse shot, it has to be the gun. Yep. That shot it initially. Yes. No huh. other gun. Right. But it, when she first describes it, it makes it seem like, I don't know, any gun. I don't like. It's it's not about it's not about circumstance. It's about intention. So it's like if you're standing. Well, that's what there, she says. But that's what I'm saying too. If well, you disagree, yeah, you can't disagree with what I'm saying. If it's what the movie's saying, it already <laughs> happened. He already disagreed. What happens happens. <laughs> what happens happens. No, but I think one of the coolest parts of that is where she like puts the bullet down and it starts spinning on its own but then you don't see that she like flicks it to him but then when he like gets it it, he flicks it to her but you're watching that whole interaction in reverse Mm -hmm. right so with the gun that gun i think the only plot hole that might like be there is the fact that okay is it enough for the bullet to be inverted does the gun have to be inverted too? That's yeah. Uh, well, you know what though? He, since he is the protagonist and he set this all up in the future, he probably is the one that dropped the bullet. He is the one that shot that bullet. He's the one sending all this shit back to her so that they have the knowledge in order to fight this. So that's just like an is, explanation. How is how are they getting it? They're stealing it from Sater. No, she's saying it's getting sent back to us and they don't really know how, but they what we find out later in the movie is that he has his own machine. He could be sending it back because in the future he knows when how all this... When do we find out he has his own machine? No, the, the Indian lady has her own machine and then we find out that he is actually her boss. Oh, okay, okay. The Indian lady, yes. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, Priya. Um, Priya. Oh, we haven't gotten to that scene yet, but... Yeah, that... we need to hurry up. Yeah, so yeah. Let's, get to, let's get to India. And I, when we get to India, I was like, why are we in India? And then he explains it in a little bit that like they trace the bullet because he did mention that like, yeah. oh, let's trace the bullet. And they trace it. The old, apparently the only place in the world is Mumbai. Uh, but I, that that whole I mean, I like, OK, first of all, like I said, didn't know anything about this movie. I didn't know Robert Pattinson was in it uh, first. And I they kept saying uh, it's a Twilight World, and then I saw Robert Pattinson. And I was like, "Oh, it is a Twilight World indeed." Here we go, Robert Pattinson. But I, <laughs> I liked him a lot in this movie. I was like, "All right, let's do this." Um, but that scene, I was just like, "I don't understand." If they could trace it back to this man, 
he's he's he ha- he has his tendrils. This man is like well connected in the CIA and uh, all these various agencies and such. It's super secretive. If he is a part of this tenant thing, do they not have any way to co- communicate with other members of tenant? So what I found interesting is, first of all, it's not him, right? It's his wife. It's his wife. Right, 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 of course. That, but he thought, I was just it. speaking in terms of what he knew at the time. No, no, no. Right. And, and so then when you later find out that um, she purposely gave the protagonist the information about uh, plutonium 241, yes. you find out that it, it's almost you, you wonder they knew that he was going to infiltrate their house. Right. Right. So then it's like, well, then they made it maybe too easy for him. They could have well, called okay. off half of their security office. That, okay. That, well, that's what I was going to say is like, the thing that bothered me about it is like, they were on this, I mean, not, it gets more complicated than this, but they were on the same team as far as they knew the tent with the <laughs> tenant and the, you know, hands and such work in, but they went into her house and murdered her guards. <laughs> like, uh they choked one out uh, and they he, shot the other they one they shot the other he one the other rob, one kills rob, fuck rob pat yeah. rob pat shot that guy in cold rob blood. pat like shot how, that guy in cold blood and killed him for sure i like how he tells one of the security like, guards to uh he's like dude eat your food it's getting cold <laughs> yeah that was fun that was don't let it get cold I, I, you, you know what though anthony to be fair it was never explained okay think about it they choke out one he tells the guy to go in the corner and he's holding the the guys in the security room with the security cameras hostage, yeah. even telling him to eat, right? There is nothing in that moment that tells us that that other one who was shot wasn't shot with some sort of trank. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's just pretend it was a trank. I got so you. So I'm make Alon happy. Make Alon happy. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, it's no, all about me. Okay. No blood on Batman does not kill people. He just I'm, beats the shit out of them. He's That's the right. protagonist. Well, when they talk about double protagonist and double inverted antagonist, do you guys kind of think that because John David Washington keeps saying he's the protagonist. When they said that there's two two protagonists, you think Neil was the other one? Well, I think there were many protagonists. I actually think this whole story um, is Christopher Nolan playing with story structure and having fun with like the hero's journey. I actually think that I, I I can't prove this, but I think that he made a save the cat joke by making the female protagonist named Cat and having All her right. need to be saved. Um, and then she ends up basically freeing herself, becoming another protagonist. Dude, um, when, when, and I think you, I think a, a big problem also like not a problem with this movie is that you can see the twists coming from a mile away. Um, especially when you kind of start to understand what this movie is about. Yeah. As soon as I knew um, there was time travel, I was like, oh, that's him fighting himself for sure. But I'll tell you, I still didn't understand how it was happening. And I was like, it was, it was very unsettling. And like the music had me like, like anxious. For, a lot of forget the time. how like, it was happening. How was this shot? Yeah. I want to know how, like, the technicality of shooting the scene. Well, you know, it's it. also funny too, though, is like, even if you're like, oh, he's fighting himself, mm-hmm. but Robert Pattinson was also fighting him. Yeah. I like, and then cat was diving off her own ship like i think you start to realize that towards the end but then like how it connects and the the other thing too is so you guys were talking about like the protagonist name and all that i think what's interesting is when you see this movie in a whole you realize that the reason he doesn't have a name and he's just named the protagonist is because in the future he has decided to do that to not give his name so he can't be found so that he because he's he's kind of fucking john connor well yeah. of this whole thing kind of like yes but it's <laughs> that's a that's a fun way of looking well at he's not it. Yeah. fucking john connor he is john connor the, don't get the people wrong like he yeah because that would make cat john connor so you're right <laughs> so she yeah yeah <laughs> or is neil john connor and that's a that's they're a all john connor it's john they're connor all john, all they're all protagonists. john connor in I, death we are all john, john connor. connor yes <laughs> um but in if project you, protagonist it, everyone's john connor <laughs> I mean, if you want to look at it that way, you could see that like Neil's a protagonist in his own story. The protagonist is the protagonist. And then Kat is also a protagonist in her own story. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the the minute and I think this is another one of the coolest moments of the movie. The minute you figure out that she was jealous of the woman who she witnessed jumping off the ship. It's like, wow, I didn't take you for the jealous type. I I was jealous of her freedom. She becomes the person that she wants to be free. And I think that's beautiful. Like that's a beautiful way of looking at it and i think like anthony said it's it's nolan playing with story structure yeah um she uh, also after she jumps off the ship drags his dead body behind the boat which i was like 
so this is the cool a cool part too and i and i was gonna get to it more but i'll just like plant the seed now is that remember when they said after vietnam after the yacht thing he disappeared for like 14 days or something like that so he's dead (laughs) it's because he's dead but but when she showed him her scar He's he's the one. He, okay, that's the satyr that's been with us the whole there's time. There's only one satyr. Mm-hmm. No, there's not. Yeah, there is. There's not. As we've explained, there's only one. They just it's you know whether it loops and all that. I what you could say is like there's no way that there's only one because the he let the one. There's only one lo- of each person. Yes, there's. Uh, okay. Well, damn it. And also, this is when he well, is going to, because this is when he's going to kill himself. So all mm-hmm. the other stuff he's done, he's gone into the future. He's inverted himself to get all the way back to this moment where it detonates and kills. He's then able to kill the world. I So then explain this then, because when um, who's the the Indian guy that he's like, he's the one who crashed the plane. He's the one who grabbed the boat. Was his name? I mean, once again, I don't know if we know anyone's name, but I know who you're talking about. I like that guy, though. The Indian guy with the beard, right? Yeah. We're all on the same page. Yeah. So when he's driving the boat... His with name Kat, is Mahir. We do actually we do hear his, his, name. His, his name. Well, I don't know if we hear his name. I had subtitles on because, and real quick, when I saw this in theaters, you couldn't hear shit of the dialogue of this movie. Well, really, I, oh, it's so funny. I wrote a post about, like, about that because I saw a lot of those complaints, but when I was watching it at home, I didn't have that problem. So I was no. maybe it was like a... What, did you have subtitles on? No. Yeah, I, I definitely could hear it better, but I also had subtitles on, it, wow. like in theaters. And so I guess that's like, it's also a chicken in the egg. Is it? Is it uh, Nolan's fault? Is it the theaters can't fucking do it right? But that's funny. I mean, yeah, I heard it. I heard it fine this time. Well, so okay, I was, I was going to say just about the audio. I did notice there were a couple scenes where I was like, I bet people complained about this, but I kind of liked it stylistically. Like when um, Robert Pattinson was walking through the uh, the Freeport. And he's walking yeah. through looking at, but he's looking at all of the fire extinguishers and all of the stuff where, where the guy was trying to explain what everything is. And we don't really hear what that guy is saying. And I was like, I wonder if people complained about this because the dialogue is really weird, whereas the music is super it was loud. A lot, of, a lot of John David Washington's the like, music was, was super loud, wasn't it? Oh, like, yeah. That's, that's my one complaint about the audio is that the music overtook the scenes multiple times. But I think that was a stylistic choice. Yeah. The, the, the thing that I hear about Nolan and what he's done, and I hear that this is in Dunkirk too, mm-hmm. is that he records the audio. He records the vocals of the actors on the same mic that the explosions are happening because he wants the audience to feel like they are right there. Right. So it wouldn't, you wouldn't feel like you wouldn't, I know. I, maybe it's kind of deaf in us with uh, Oppenheimer. He's he like, is. Oppenheimer. He really is. So you die at the end when it you explodes. <laughs> like everyone dies. If he you go plant, see it. He plants one of those bombs in the Can opera I, in every oh. movie theater that Oppenheimer is shot. I have, uh, yeah. It's um, crazy. But but Love. you guys understand what, what I'm saying, right? It's like if if there's gunfire happening in the scene and there's right. two characters trying to talk over the gunfire, mm-hmm. we're not supposed to get a clear audio file of their conversation. We're supposed to have trouble as much as they're having trouble li- hearing each right. other. Right. And I think and I mean, stylistically, that's like a good way to look at a movie, but also that's kind of a dumb way to look at it. It's frustrating. That's, that, like it. that that wasn't the only that wasn't the only issue. There were times where John David Washington and uh, Robert Pattinson are just having a conversation, explaining things, and he kind of he kind of talks low, and you know the the audio was not mixed well. There was two like for the theater, and like I was just like, oh, I don't know what's. I don't know what he just what explained. Saying. I don't know what knowledge he has right now. Yeah, I think my the 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 only time where it was an issue for me at all was when they were on the boat, <clears throat> when Sater is pushed off the boat, like right before he gets pushed off. Um, when he's talking to the protagonist, and I was just like, I can hear them, but why does it sound like they're speaking through like like styrofoam or something? Like it sounds like what is because the, the radio is the, actually the, yeah. shit radio. Yeah. It's like this is terrible. also explain to me a radio system like a walkie talkie radio that goes from freaking Vietnam to Siberia, Kazakhstan, mm. or wherever they are in right. Kazakhstan. <laughs> the I mean Russia, Russia. <laughs> um yeah. uh what w- one thing we skipped in the mumbai part that i really love is and we talked about this a before but 
the uh, Diet Coke because you don't drink on the job. And he's like, I prefer soda water. He's like, no, you don't. Mm-hmm. And when you first see it, they pass it off as, you know, I've steadied you. You know, I looked up your file or whatever. Right. Um, but it's obviously why he knows this. But also, it's bungee jumpable. And he's like, that's not a word. He's like, it may not be a word, but it's our only way out. I, I love his oh, just yeah. like calling him out for like, you knew what the fuck I meant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that too. I think with a really strong um like a, a strong thing that this movie has is that it has a lot of uh plot and detail to explain to us so we understand the rules of this world um but then it also does a really good job in developing this friendship between the two main characters oh yeah and so at the end of it it's heartbreaking because you know what happens and they they mm-hmm. split apart but it wouldn't be heartbreaking if you didn't value their relationship. And I think that's what this movie does is that at the same time, it's trying to explain to you all this shit about inversion and bullets and Sater and red and blue room and whatever it is. It has dialogue in this that is like cementing these characters as good friends. Yeah, I I love that. But I, I, I shouldn't say, but, but I'm going to like, I did love that, but I feel like it was like a have your cake and eat it too moment because he's like, he, and he, he kind of alludes, not just alludes. He directly says, we've had this whole life together. Essentially. He's like, you know, we've done all this stuff that you're not familiar with yet, but you, you'll see. It's like the Bill and Ted thing. You know, it's like, give my love <laughs> to the princesses. And it's like, you'll see like and the protagonist doesn't know yet, but he's going to go have a whole sequel, a whole series with this character at some point in the past. Well, I'm about to tell some tell you guys something that's going to blow your freaking minds. Ready this for is this? actually a Batman movie. This is uh, actually a Batman. No, um, <laughs> I read and then I fact checked this and I looked at this movie in a different way. Um, and I was like, oh, it could be Neil is Cat's son. And that's how they meet. And that's why he knows him for so long. That's interesting. No, is no, there any yes. evidence of that? No, no. So because how could that be? Because I well. Well, first of all, forget if, Ash, do you, if you go back in time, don't you? Doesn't he turn into a little boy again? Like, how does yeah, that work? They weren't going back in time, huh. they were, they were going back. I mean, in time. no, of course, they're going back, to, but like, that's interesting, though. But actually, no, well, here's the other thing, though. It could be, it, but if why? you, I don't think it's right. No, but I don't think so either. Go on. If you invert, it's not time travel, yeah. you have to spend all the time okay. it takes yeah. to invert. Right, but what's an interesting point is that when they so first... do you de-age? Entropy is reversing, though. Does that mean you get younger? No, so... it means you get less orderly, <laughs> yeah, like or you get more orderly. Would so you the... become? Do you eventually become? I'm not a scientist, so the, the couple ways you can look at this is that Robert Pattinson is the only character in this that dyes his hair, and so is that like to throw you off on the fact that, or he doesn't want, he doesn't want himself to be recognized in the in the past his past right or is it like the fact that um he um was taking special care and asking the protagonist when they first meet what are you willing to do and he goes are you willing to take kids as hostages so it's like it's like and that kind of comes back in the end so it's like is he trying to protect himself as a kid I don't know. I read a lot of evidence. It seemed like really cool. And if you kind of think about it, it it kind of makes sense. I mean, it kind of doesn't, but it also kind of does. And if it is, it's really fucking cool. That that does raise the question about the aging, de-aging thing. Mm-hmm. Like, how does reversing, do you just not age until you get back to the point you're at again? Because eventually... What if, you're, what if you time travel back to a point where there is no... It's not, ta- it's not time travel. What well, kind of is? Because they time travel back two days. No, except you're not time traveling. You have to you have to live all that time backwards. It's Okay, so then what if how does Seder Oh, go on. Just real quick. What he if sat he, in a, he sat in, a room, sat in a room for 25, 25 years, years reading books, watching movies? He's very wizened. But yeah. it's not it's not so far fetched, right? Cuz if he does do that and then he kind of goes why? and he reinverts himself, why? Because you could do a lot of a lot of things with the knowledge of the past or the knowledge of the future in the past. But he, he, he hits on his mom at one point. He's like, Oh, don't worry, baby. You're going to live. You guys don't remember that scene. 
I remember the, them making out real hard. I don't know what you're what, talking about. Yeah, what version did you guys watch? Oh, real quick. Um, I, want, I also want I also want to say that um this bring the movie brings up the grandfather paradox, and the only other place I had heard that was Futurama. Hmm. And I don't know if you've watched Futurama, but yeah. in that he goes back and kills his grandfather and then sleeps with his grandmother yeah. to become his own grandfather. And I always assumed that was the grandfather paradox, not just killing the grandfather and like still that living. But the, you know. the the best explanation I've ever seen of the grandfather paradox is in the Umbrella Academy uh, show. Mm. They explain it in, in such detail and they explain it so well. But um, but no, he doesn't. <laughs> He doesn't kill his grandfather and fucks his grandmother. Um, We've been going for an hour, so we need to start bullshit. speeding it up a little okay, bit. Cool. Um, well, I do just want to say, how do if if they don't time travel for years and years and years, right? How do they know each other in the future? How is the past is past? And then how does Rob Pat have all that knowledge of them being friends? Well, okay, really, so there. Well, well, really, it's because Robert Pattinson, because you're thinking of time in a non-tenant way instead of in the way that he. He lived all this life, and now he's on his rebound coming back. So he actually has been tr- inverted for a while, I guess, uh, or he inverted a while to get back here. He's John Connor. He was sent to the past through inversion to save the world, and he does because he pulls them out. So, But um, th- what's interesting about this movie to me, too, is that the movie is kind of shown from the red perspective. Like We get a little bit of the inversion, but for the most part – it's shown from John David Washington, who was kind of moving forward. Yes. And uh, Neil, Robert Pattinson, is sort of always kind of moving backwards. Like he's going in the same way as him, but like his journey is more backwards in yeah. totality, whereas the other is like forwards. But I, I still think, yeah, I mean, he did have to spend at least a good amount of time going. He said they had years of adventures in the future. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is because the only way for him to look that young and to know that is time travel. There's no time travel. I want to be clear. There is if he's just sitting inverted and going back. Or that's good evidence for him actually being Kat's son. Yeah. And that's and and it has nothing to do. Yeah. So their their adventures together. He was just referring to (laughs) teaching him as a child. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You know, like that's. I think I, think I I assume would, he recruited him as like a teenager, like a oh, like a Batman oh, and Robin situation. That's all I was saying. It's a Batman movie, secretly. Um, so, we so even had a, a Catwoman. The protagonist is a groomer. I will. Yes, that's he imprinted <laughs> in the, on that child. He in learned the it from art Twilight. of Tenet. In the art of Tenet. Um, I will say, John David Washington. He doesn't have enough movies that where he's actually the protagonist. He's an amazing actor, and I would li- love to see him in more of like a. Like he should have his own like Mission Impossible franchise because he's he would make a cool action like a regular well, action his, hero. This is his James Bond, basically. Yeah, you know, it's a spy thriller. Cool. Yeah, he but they're not making Bond. a sequel of this. He's... Well, the buddy comedy that Anthony was talking about on, oh, on the pal- Twitter. Yeah, palindrome. Nice. Um, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> all right, let's let's speed through some of this. If you want to stop and talk about anything, we can do it. But Michael Caine showing up as always as some, himself. Exposing, <laughs> it's Sir Michael Caine. To yeah, you. they literally were like, "It's Sir Michael Caine." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> he he says he like has no, he had no idea what the movie was about. He was just given this little bit, but he's really? explained. You know, he gives a lot of exposition about he's how Sator not. grew up in this ghost yeah. city, um, and this is like one of the few that wasn't given a new name and is like on the map. The it's way still, like, he plays this character and he's explaining the stuff that happens in in Siberia sounds exactly like the way Alfred would explain. Well, your father was in Burma with me, and you know, like that entire like thing in The Dark Knight. It's exactly how this plays out. And then there's this like contrived thing about how like I, mean, I don't know. She's an art dealer, so. Mm-hmm. She sells a fake painting, which she later on says that she didn't do on purpose. And so this is John David Washington's in to get her. I love the scene where he's talking to her and then Sator's men come to try and beat him up. Oh, that was amazing. The way he just sort of like he's very nonchalant in the way he kicks people's asses. He's got a cheese grater at one point that he like fucking rubs this dude's face all up. That dude's fucked. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Like he's he's in trouble for I'd almost be like, just shoot me. He's going to be a Freddy Krueger extra for the rest of his life. That's all he's... Yeah. Her face, her face, 
when she's in the car and she's crying and he comes out unscathed and she's like relieved and the oh. guy who's driving her is like oh get the fuck out of here <laughs> it's like that's a great moment in the film um and then this leads to she tells him hey i think the painting is in oslo in this freeport and so that leads to the plane scene which when i first saw i was like man it's a really cool scene that they're kind of wasting up front and then we get to see it uh, again like towards the end that, of the movie that was cool um i actually i think i like the inverted version like better i mean just like i think the way it's done i don't know I, just the whole thing is so cool i think it was such a cool set piece and like the, the way they did it was a lot of fun and i really enjoyed it, especially the inverted when you get to see it again he flies back through that fight the second time was so much more like rewarding um but i will say the whole time i was watching that that scene in that plan i was just like who what like they need like a mission impossible like string like someone go up in like the rafters or, or like you know go in the air vents or something why are they going why are they crashing a plane instead of sneaking into a building so it's <laughs> this moment it's this moment when they're first being um shown through the free port yeah and it's so quick and i feel like there's so many moments that i probably even missed watching mm. it and i've seen this movie two and a half times yeah. um but there's a moment where Remember when the guy's showing Robert Pattinson the Freeport, they go um, yeah. to the air hangar oh, and yeah. he's like, oh, is this where they meet on the on the tarmac? And the guy makes a joke. He's like, they're private jets. And he's private like, jet. oh, of course. Right. Robert Pattinson looks at a couple of shipping crates that are in mm -hmm. the corner and you linger on those for like more than half a second. And those are the same kind of shipping crates that he was like, we need to go into those shipping crates to be transported inside the Freeport when they're inverted. Right. Right. He was wrong, though, because he assumed that because that those shipping crates would end up inside the Freeport, but they were just delivered outside the Freeport. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, those he just got in the wrong ones. And I think that's just kind of funny how uh -huh. it's not a huge plot point. But if you catch it, it's like kind of a like a wink, wink joke within the movie. I think that's mm -hmm. cool. I I um I really like how uh, when they're doing the plan to crash in the Freeport, Mahir's like they're like, what if you could get caught? And Mahir's like, well, obviously they'll assume terrorism, but like, <laughs> but you know, nothing's been not taken, wrong. so yeah, <laughs> no, he's, no, nobody's died, so I think I'm okay. Yeah, he's like, I'll get you know, I'll get extradited and I'll be there's fine. A, there's a great quote from Rob Pat and and John Washington who are like, um. He goes, well, that seems a little bit dramatic. And he's like, no, not at all. And he's like, well, ki what kind of plane do we crash? And he's like, okay, that part's a bit dramatic. There's yeah, a lot of great one-liners in this movie. No, that is good, too. Right. Um, and then, so what do we got? We got the whole plane thing. And then he goes, what does he go back to Mumbai to, what, to talk to them again? To talk to uh, Priya again? Only when he's, no, only when what? he's inverted. So that happens later. Or when he comes back to be inverted, right? Well, no, no. So I think, doesn't he ask her to he bring her. Priya? He I, I can't remember. I can't well, remember. I guess you're right. So he tells her, he meets he, up with her. No, and he I think he says her. he, I think he says they're going to go back to Mumbai, but I don't think they end up doing it. They basically, they go straight to, to Bicky and he tells her that he destroyed the painting, which I was like. Oh, we're right. there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he he's like Debicki. He tells her that they destroyed the painting, and at first I was like, oh, maybe he actually did, because Sator might have gone back in time, knowing it was destroyed. He went back in time to save it, so that he'd still have this right. leverage. Because uh, in that scene, but he just lied. Well, yeah, no, he did just lie. But that scene where she's like, "I'm calling the shots now," and then the plate gets pulled up, and he's like, "Are you? Are you really?" Well, if you look at this, this whole film is built on lies because the the one that he says about, um, oh, I, I didn't standard tell procedure. him. Huh, I'm sorry. I said it's their standard procedure, right? It's like, oh, yeah, the standard operating procedure. Operating procedure. Right. Um, mm -hmm. The the SOP. Yeah. But the 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 fact. OK, so him lying to her about the, the destroying the painting is one of them. But also, man, the protagonist lies a lot. And he double lies too. When he told Sater that the bomb, the piece was in the BMW, and then he tells Neil, "Oh, I lied to him. It's not in the BMW," just so that he has the will to go and save Cat. Right. And then once he does the inversion, he turns to him. He's like, "Actually, I did tell him the truth." It was like the double lie that was necessary mm -hmm. for the moment. I love that kind of stuff. 
Absolutely. Um, I love the the line from Branna about "Did you fuck my wife yet?" And he goes, oh, "No, not yet, not yet." Yeah. yeah. Which so, okay, we didn't talk about the balls comment where oh, he said, oh, was about "We're to. talking about okay, 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 you." I was about to. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I love. He's like he's like you don't know what it's like to watch a man try and pull his balls out of his throat so he can breathe again. Like, yeah, yeah. that that caught me off guard and i was I, off guard i was just like what is okay i guess and i i love the response to it where he's just like this isn't a thing you just said to me <laughs> you know just like okay <laughs> he's like we're gonna take you out back and do that to you now and he's like but do you like the opera but do you like the- yeah yeah <laughs> come on i just like it's such a spy thing like uh, also this this is kind of more of a global comment, but I just, I mean, I think this is fairly obvious, but it just sort of hit me in like full detail right now that this movie is like the movie is a palindrome. Like the movie is inverted to where we start at the opera Mm -hmm. and then we end back at the exact same time as the opera, right? Mm -hmm. In Vietnam was the same exact time as the opera because Seder went to the opera to get that piece while he was in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So like the whole movie goes to a certain point and then comes back like on itself. Do they though? Because what what happens? Because the end in Viet- we the end in Vietnam uh, when when the protagonist kills Priya. That's in Vietnam. I mean, that's like that's like a very like tiny little ending at the end. But the like the main part of the movie ends like back in Vietnam when he kills her at the same time as they're doing the you know getting the thing away from the bomb. But Rob Pat and the protagonist are both at the opera during that time. So how how are they there? But also, they're in Siberia. You know, there's this um, inversion thing we've been talking about. <laughs> if you're aware. Okay, okay, fine. Rob Pat's inverted, but uh, protagonist isn't at that point. Yeah, but they can go back and then they if Inverted, motherfucker yeah. if they go back two weeks in inversion, they then have to live that two weeks. In inversion, okay, yeah, I guess. No, not in inversion. Like once the inversion's over, they go back forward and they have to live two weeks going forward. There is no time travel. (laughs) I mean, they're kind of okay. Fine, but 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 even if okay, so if what you said is, then my thing about Neil being the young boy is even more relevant. I I I mean I don't care anymore about your theory. (laughs) I just don't care about it. Like. You've said your piece. It's possible. But I mean, I'm not going to argue over a fan theory that you read on Wikipedia, Lon. It was IMDb, you motherfucker. Okay. (laughs) I read the IMDb. I didn't read that. Nice. You didn't deep dive enough. All right. So at this point, at this point, we are. We're like um, 30 minutes into this fucking movie. No, no. So let's let's jump ahead a little bit here because um, when. I think we should jump ahead to the heist. That's what I was going to say. So when they're trying to get the um, what what they think is plutonium 241, um, I think like the whole getting all the trucks, cornering that one truck and getting in is pretty cool. But I don't think the movie kicks off really until um, Sater shows Kat the red room with all the guns lined up. She pulls the gun on him that that. Uh, John David Washington gives her in the past. Mm-hmm. And then we don't quite know, like as the audience, we don't quite know about the red and the blue room yet to the point where when he goes into the room that he's shut in and you see this red light, he kind of disappears from that. At that point, we're now on the highway and he gives this line to his thugs that he's like, tell me everything that or record everything that happens. Yeah. And tell me everything happens. But we don't know why he needs to know at that point. But then when we find out, it's like it's it's oh, the information to do that that pincer move that Aaron Taylor Johnson was telling us about, right? But as soon as that scene kicks off with the with the um the highway chase, dude, when you see that cracked mirror on his SUV, you know that's gonna be like coming back around real quick. Oh, yeah, that was the one. I mean, that was one thing about this movie where I was like, if you have that perspective of the inversion, you know, that's happening. You'd constantly be on the lookout for anything broken or, just, you know, changed or whatever. You know, wouldn't you? I would. I, you know, if you you see a hole in the wall, be like, I'm not going near that hole ever again. You know, like when he <laughs> when he goes when they go to that one room and he's touching the he looks at the bullet holes and he's like, what happened here? He's like, it hasn't happened yet. I'm like, 
I would not be near those. I'd be like, gotta go. We gotta get out of this room. Someone's about to <laughs> shoot. You know, but he's just like, oh, yeah, so I'm going to pick up this gun. And now it's me. You know, and he's like along for the ride. At, at that point, he doesn't really have the expertise or the right. experience to, like, think of that sort of stuff. Yeah. When you get back to that room again, oh, that so that's cool. when he's an expert on it. Yeah. And that's kind of what I love about the movie is that, yeah, me too. Uh, again, making fun of, this, of the hero's journey is that. And, and also, well, okay, so he becomes an amateur and an expert very quickly in this film. But the amount of information that Robert Pattinson pretends to not know right. and 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 uh, uh, John David Washington thinks he's teaching Robert Pattinson, there's a turn in this movie where all of a sudden Rob Pat knows everything and then John David Washington is like looking at him like, who the fuck are you people? Like, mm-hmm. what what is happening, you know? I am um, before we get into the inverted part with John David Washington, which is my favorite. I feel like if a uh, a convoy of a truck and two police cars is carrying plutonium, that they would start to notice that, like, hey, we're kind of getting surrounded here. one hundred percent. I we do something about this, or should we just keep moving? What do we? I, mean, I had to. I rewatched that scene a couple times because I was like, "How did this happen?" Like, I, you know, if I'm if I'm in traffic and I start yeah. noticing cars getting near me, I'm like, "I'm going to speed up and get around this guy. This guy's a, yeah. you know, like I'm going to go. There's no way I'm going to stay here." He, they're, and they're just like. No, everything's good. No, no, oh, they're getting a little close. Well, I feel loved. I, I kind of like the know. shade that this I, creates. I can't see anything. This I think nice. the uh, I I think the fire truck kind of dismantles that um, yep. paranoia, right? Because you what see, what comes fire... in like last? Right, they're but surrounded. It, they have someone in the front, the back, and the right side for like already. It's like move over. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like if I saw a fire truck, it's like, oh, I better get out of the way. I'm going to change my lane and get away from this fire truck. I don't want to be in their way. No, yeah. not these guys. They're like, oh, they're, they're going to put me in a nice hug. All these vehicles. <laughs> I feel comfy. Be, I feel comfy. Uh, the, I, the amount that how long it takes the police to realize that what is <sighs> happening. And they're like, OK, pull over. I'm like, bitch, they're not pulling over for you. Like, that's not. So when you're watching the, the chase happen in like in normal Mm -hmm. as opposed to reverse who's normal anyway so it's no i'm serious are you you talking about uh the first time the chase happens okay thank you i thought you're driving me so this is why i'm an asshole so anyway when you're watching the first time i was thinking as like Seder's car is going backwards i was like it's so hard to conceptualize the reverse of this like how it works but i was like i kind of trust that Christopher Nolan has thought about this for six yeah, years. Yeah, yeah he, he had hot wheels. He was hanging sense. out. Yeah. And then you see it forward. You're like, oh shit, he was right. That is how it would look. Yep. Well, I was confused on like, how did, how did Sater and his thugs get inverted, but then Cat isn't inverted. <sighs> Yet she's in the car that is moving in inversion. I was like, wouldn't that fuck her up? But I guess not. It, it, yeah, yeah, I don't. It's almost like they brought her through the e- he well he tells the guy he's like hey take her go with him and so then he brings her through the exit so that she's not inverted so she's not breathing this stuff yep because there's I don't think there's any like rhyme or reason that you can't walk on the other side of that door <laughs> like you're allowed to be there no you it's are just, it's just not so, yeah. inverted yeah yeah so he goes inverted and I think cat's not and then all of his other guys I think were already previously inverted I guess um is that why there was like on before they go into that room there's like a gate and there's like the other side of that gate and when she's walking in she looks over and there's a guy in a car with the mask already on that's the driver that that we're about to meet yes okay that just went through the whole thing yeah yeah but but he's he's actually probably like on the way back maybe like he's already yeah he's on the way back Yeah. yeah so this movie yeah. is so fucking cool. It, it I also crazy. like. I can't wait to watch this again. That's what's like. It oh yeah, so I'm seriously gonna watch this like two more times this week. Yeah. But yeah. so we finally get to meet fucking Aaron Taylor Johnson, who's just like so badass in this. He really is awesome in this freaking movie. I was have like, have you seen the the Craven yes. trailer? Yes. yes. I actually, like people have fun, so actually. much problems. If you read like all the comments, people are like, "Oh, he was the wrong actor to pick for this." No, what I were they thinking? Cool. I'm like, "Are you nuts? He looks well, amazing." I think it's fun. I think like for what they're doing, I. 
I get that people like some people are like over them trying to make villains into these anti heroes and stuff. But like, I like that they're like, hey, this is a villain origin story. But yeah, of course he's going to think he's the hero until he makes some terrible choices. That's I what makes him a fun villain sometimes. You that know? is al- that is always the thing where it's like um, Tom Hardy's character is kind of like the villain later on, but right now he's the hero. Like it is yeah. just the, like a. I guess you either accept it or you don't. Like it, yeah, exactly. It it's like, as, yeah, I don't know. I I feel like like. I'm old enough to like have seen Daredevils. Like I'm, I'm about to watch the Captain America 1991 movie. There, there are allowed to be variations of characters. It's gonna keep happening. So I'm like, yeah, okay, give us a Craven the Hunter movie. Like, fine, I'll watch it and check it out. It seems like fun. Well, we're also getting the the PS5 Spider-Man 2 video game with Craven the Hunter as the main villain in that. And I'm, yeah. and I'm, you know, they're mixing media and mixing multiverses. So I'm excited to see <sighs> that interpretation alongside this live action interpretation so that yeah for sure that's gonna be fun so um i i like when he's about to go out and aaron taylor johnson's like you know fire's gonna feel like ice like and the other person's telling him this and um he just keeps saying he keeps asking questions and aaron taylor johnson's just like cowboy shit cowboy shit shit. (laughs) he's like the guy drive cowboy shit yeah um and then you see him try and drive and he's just like oh this is so weird but the other thing, the final thing from this part before we move on is I one, I don't understand how Sator gets the piece because it kind of gets away from Sator. The box goes back to the forward moving John David Washington, and then the piece had fallen into the inverted John David Washington somehow. And so now I guess Sator knows where it is and then he'll just grab it later. But oh like, oh my God, the, the coolest part of that scene is when John David Washington. And you don't know this yet because this is the first time you're watching this scene. He sees himself in that crashed car yeah. and he knows to throw it to himself. But you don't get why until you see the inverse of this and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, my God, he threw and it that's, to himself. And, and that's how he knows that he's supposed to go through. Yes. Right. Um, and then I guess Sator sees that, oh, it eventually went into inverted John David Washington's car. So when I go back. Yes, I'll just mm-hmm. I'll just invert a little bit and go in that car that's sitting there and grab it, <laughs> dude. I would be so freaked out if I saw a car that came out of like a horrible crash and yes. then all of a sudden I was yeah. in it. I'd be like, holy fucking shit. I was in that. Yeah. I was, I'm going to be in that crash. And why is it freezing? Why is, and why, it, freezing? Yeah, <laughs> why is it frozen yeah. solid? Yeah. Um, so next they go. They're in a container on the way to Oslo because they're they need to keep Cat inverted for four to five days. So they're like, "Oh, let's just go back a week to Oslo," which I guess it's funny that they need to go back to Oslo, but the only reason they're doing it is to save her. But they need to do it because they already did it. But I guess the only reason they are is for her, right? There is no other reason. They need to save her because. She's integral to the end of the movie. Yes. Um, but they, they don't know that at the time. It's just because John David Washington wants to bang her eventually if they save the world is what it seems like. You know, you say that, and I, I was even thinking that, but I think their relationship is... I'm going to sound like a loser saying this, but I think it's more of a romantic one than a sexualized one. I think it's like they have this mutual respect for each other, but I don't think there's like... There's not constant sexual tension between the two characters. It's like some over the clothes stuff, you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some like, yeah, heavy petting, they call it. He's like, I'm best friends with your son, lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's some Neil who's like, I want to bend your mom so pants. bad. And that's why, like, Neil, like, kind of like throughout the movie periodically, like, looks at him weird, like, Are you my stepdad? What's happening? <laughs> um, so now, uh, I think now is when we actually go to Priya, and she explains it's an algorithm, and that she already knew that. And he's like, "Well, why didn't you know? Why don't we stop it?" And she's like, "You know, we're not going to stop. You told me, you know, we did this on purpose, and it is was him who told her that." Um, and also the 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 way they explain it, how like we're moving forward, and they're trying to invert backwards, and if the balance gets too much, it's just like destroys us i guess that wasn't that was um shit i moved forward a little too much that's robert pattinson explaining that that's robert pattinson explaining it what she was saying is that you're about to tell me because he was like why did you send me on this wild goose chase and she's like well i needed to and he's like well when you go back and you see me two days from now you're not going to do that and she's like 
I am am. because I have to, because what's happened happened. And he's, and he's like, well, you don't know this thing. And she's like, you're about to tell me. And then he goes, no, I'm not. I'm the protagonist of the situation. And therefore I call the shots now. And that's when you start to finally get the hint that like, it is him in the future calling the shots, but not like it hasn't like fully connected yet, but that's when you get Mm -hmm. the hint that it's, it's there. Like the pieces are there. Right. And then we find out that the good guys have their own turnstile and we're heading oh, offshore. Couldn't that have come up way earlier? Yeah. And then Debicki's like, oh, by the way, I haven't mentioned that my husband's got terminal cancer. Um, <laughs> what did that help? Yeah. You know you what? Mean, there's di- more motive than we knew about previously. OK. Also, if time is like. <laughs> well, why do you think about he, that? Couldn't he live forever? He just keeps going backwards. Like if he stays or, inverted, he just like uncreates his his illness. Well, no, not that necessarily, but just like I mean, well, because you're traveling in time, but your body's still organically traveling forward. Is right? it like, though? I don't know though. They don't really explain it. I imagine. No, it, it is. It. I really, imagine like, it is. You're still old. You're still you're still aging. You're still although uh, although if an explosion is ice and ice is an explosion, right? Then it's maybe the, your mm. pancreatic cancer turns into something good and marshmallows. And, yeah. Marshmallows. You just pick it out of yourself. <laughs> so I was actually thinking earlier, I didn't, I didn't want to, I was like, this is dumb. But since you mentioned limitless, I was like, wait a second. What if they inverted that pill and it, instead of killing people or putting them in a coma, it awakened their brains. So instead oh, the, of putting the them cyanide in a pill, yeah, yeah, the cyanide pill. So instead of putting them to sleep in a coma, they inverted it and it awakens your brain and it is limitless. <laughs> And that's that's where the limit was. You know what? Honestly, that's a good thought. But I think when you invert a pill, all you do is if you try to swallow it, it just keeps coming back up. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I can't so, get this thing down. And then she, he's like, you know, when do you think he'll do it? And you said there was this time where you're happiest, and she's like, oh yeah, Vietnam. And I was like, man, that looks so much like Italy, and it was Italy. <laughs> So they had um, the yacht that... Uh, You've never been to Vietnam, Italy? <laughs> <laughs> Similar enough, I guess. It's just funny when someone's like, what's the happiest moment of your life? And you're like, Vietnam. And I'm just thinking like, oh, like all the all the soldiers coming back from Nam. Yeah, are like, like every time I've heard the words Vietnam in my life, it's been yeah. in that context. So, exactly. Until then, so, so it's like, okay. It's actually quite a lovely place now. Um, I I just think that like... You, you would be like traveling. You're just like, there's so many fucking Italian people in Vietnam. Like what the hell is going on here? Um, yeah. So they set this all up. He's like, you go back. And I love the little setup for the end where he's like, if you know, you ever feel like you're in danger, right. Call this number. Um, and it's for posterity a lot, posterity. which is not a, not a fake word. Now I was, I never said it was fake. I just kept getting propriety and, and posterity mixed up, but um, prosperity. Do you, do you know what he means when he says that? Like when you say something for posterity, it's just like for like, you know, for, for like the future. The yeah. Yeah. OK. OK. That's yeah. what I thought. Well, it's like I, it was one of those moments where I was like, OK, that's Chekhov's information. Let's check off cell phone. You know, it's like uh, you guys know about that, like Chekhov's gun. Like if you introduce a gun in the first act, that's yeah. the fire by the third act. Well, that's what I thought about the gun that that John David Washington gives Cat is yeah, like, oh, that's how. And, and it's funny, too, right, because. Right. Because that's how he gets the gun to shoot her in the blue room in the first place, because Mm -hmm. she has the gun on her. I was like, damn it. Yeah, it's crazy. Is she Schrodinger's cat? Because you don't know if she's going to like. She is Schrodinger's. She's in that when she's in that little thing heading backwards. You're like, is she going to live or is she going to die? If she yeah, she's in the tinfoil, we don't know if she's both alive and dead in there. It depends on if we look. <laughs> well, what's funny is that isn't that car in um inverse inverted, right? So that car is heading backwards in inversion, but that means it would have to start at a point, right? It didn't start in a crash, it was starting at a point. And so my well, the, thought, the container's well, on, not in, the, no no the container's not inverted. It didn't go through the thing. How is it going backwards though when no one has the foot on the gas? It's not going backwards. It's moving just, I, I don't know, but it's not going backwards. No, it's inverted. It's inverted. Which car? You, the car you that, that, that Kat's in and, they bo- and Sater and his guy both jump out of, and uh, the protagonist has to jump in it to slam on the brakes or it crashes into that group of cars. That's what well, doesn't make sense is they say materials need to be inverted, but like – I thought you were talking about the shipping container that took them to Oslo, whether no, no, no. that was inverted. No, I'm but talking the car, about the, we don't, but car. the cars. 
Could an inverted person go in a normal car? Well, holy hell, David. I was trying to tell a joke and you're fucking it up. What I was just trying to get to is that if that car is inverted, it was moving backwards. It didn't come out of an inversion from a crash, right? So yes, he pushed the brakes at the right time, but wouldn't it have stopped anyways with him pushing the brakes or not? That was your joke? It, it was more of an explanatory like <laughs> joke making fun of it. But you know what? Never mind. You've ruined it. You've ruined it for everyone. I feel, I, yeah i feel like we had a good joke that was about we were all gonna laugh and now we yeah. didn't because of david yeah That's... i ruined it for i ruined it for posterity so let's move to the invasion at the end of this um which i going into this second watch was like i think this is like my least favorite part of this movie but then i watched it a second time and i understood what was going on i was like no this is awesome too yeah yeah i think that's how i felt too i was like i don't know what's happening and then i watched it a second time and i was like I know exactly what's happening, especially when you know that they're they're running into that tunnel. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson and, and John David Washington, uh, two guys with three names, um, when they're running into that tunnel and it explodes behind them and then they're being chased by that truck that you later realize is Rob Pattinson. Um, well, no, he's you, got three names too, Rob, Burt, Pattinson. Right, yeah, Burt is <laughs> Rob B. Pattinson. Um, when he runs in, and um, or no, when he's driving the truck behind them and he's honking, when you watch that a second time and you know that's him, it is much more rewarding to the fact. Like, every, like this is the the thing about this movie is that even when you know the ending, watching yeah. it with the knowledge of everything is still really entertaining. Oh yeah, I watched that the first time through and was like, oh, so I was like, that can't be Robert Pattinson, and then I was like, oh fuck, it is Robert Pattinson. <laughs> What's really fucked up is the first time I watched this, I went to the bathroom and I didn't push pause and I oh. didn't rewind it. And oh so God. I missed him being reinverted at the site. And I come in and I'm like, wait, no. what happened? And then when I watched it again, I was like, OK, that makes sense now. Oh, yeah, I was going to say I was like I was not going to the bathroom and still rewinding things to make. It. I was like, OK, I understand how that happened. OK, cool. And then I would rewind something. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to the bathroom, I rewind it anyway. Push pause. I'm going to come back and watch that again. And then, like I was I can't wait to watch this. But how many how many of these inversion machines are there? There's the one that the good guys have. There's the one in the free port. There's the one mm -hmm. in the um somewhere on the side of the road during the car chase. And then there's this one that is at the Salkov 12 site. Like, so there's Alas. four. Yeah, there's four from what we see, Stalsk. Um, so they're building a bomb. I And I talked to David about this, too. It's like, this mm -hmm. is the part where I was confused. You have Aaron Taylor Johnson's team. And I guess right. they're all part of this organization called Tenet. Yeah. And so it's an... Right. It's a it's an army essentially that's kind of like a, I guess you you could say to just understand easier it's just like a sector of the CIA or it's like a, it's, it's a sector off the off the of the thing hold on who are they fighting are they uh, is it all uh, Sater's men yeah he has an army mm -hmm. he can afford an army no problem he's the richest most powerful person in the world okay so he has an army protecting this site. What's funny, though, is you do not see any of them except for the run Russian guy. You do not see a single soldier for the opposing team in this I, movie. I know you don't. That's Ever. why I was yeah. so fucking confusing. Yeah. And they're like the, basically fighting themselves. That's what it feels like. Because they're yeah, like, it is nice. and here's where I got so confused. Aaron Taylor Johnson goes, okay, any questions? And then the one guy says, well, so we're defusing the bomb? And he goes, no, we are preventing us from defusing the bomb. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Who's defusing the bomb? Yeah. They What they wanted to do is they wanted it to look like that was the goal to stop the bomb. Right. So when so they, they were doing the pincer move, the first team were... was to defuse it? Well, no, no, no. Both teams are trying to defuse the bomb because they wanted Sator to think that's what they were trying to do. And then they have a splinter team that yeah. gets it out of there so that the future thinks, oh, they failed in defusing the bomb or, or whatever. Um, and that the algorithm is in there hidden because it that was that was Sater's whole point was to have it put in there so no one could get to it and he controlled it with his wristwatch right i understand that but his it, it would help if we saw a fucking bad guy in this entire thing <laughs> i actually of this too i think i prefer like the debicki stuff too i like what she 
Mahir's like, can you jump 40 feet? She's like, no, I can dive it. It's like, okay. So yes. I like when he's yes, like talking, <laughs> when Sator's talking on the radio to the protagonist and she's just in the background, like splurging sunscreen all over the deck. And then, and then he's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I spilled some sunscreen. And then if he just like got up and looked, he was like, what? Like that, that's way more sunscreen than you accidentally spill. What are you doing? Yeah. Ridiculous. Also, Sator's like a pretty nice guy in this scene. Like, he trying apologizes to get, trying to get laid yeah. for sure like this oh, is how i want to die is one last time oh there was one line he says to uh john david washington when he's like when he like sets him on fire and he freezes he's like oh but you did get my heart rate up to 130 my wife can't even do that which made me imagine him just being like very like uh, okay like in three seconds just like gotta keep the heart rate down don't want to die <laughs> don't want to talk yeah. Um, so then, uh, yeah, we save the world. Uh, Robert Pattinson yeah. basically saves everything by seeing the what's coming and inverting himself and then getting unshot. And then I they... bet that scene, I swear, I watched that scene like 300 times. I don't know about you guys. Like, it's there is a YouTube video, Anthony, for your um sanity. That... Oh, I watched it. You mean where the, the little blue guys and the little red guys and they do the whole the whole thing? It yeah, but it just plays Robert Pattinson's part. Oh, okay. And well, so it's like linear. It plays his part. Oh in no, linear. no, I watched, I watched, I watched it. it. Okay. Um, and when you, I mean, when you, when you see it, it's still it makes sense. Like, yeah, it gets crazy because if you watch, it, it, it only it, gets insane because he goes halfway through and inverts or reinverts himself, and so or uninverts himself. And when that happens, it kind of mixes up a bit. He uninverts himself and then at the end of the movie reinverts himself, which is like the second level of inception. There's like mm-hmm. three RPATs at one point in this tunnel. Yeah. It's it yeah. But but like the fact that is that the guy who runs backwards out of the tunnel? Yes. Like when the gate opens, when that's died. him. Yeah. yeah. Well yeah, that's RPAT. He died. That was him. No 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 Bef- there's a third there's a second guy in there. So okay so sorry I'm just gonna say there's the Ukrainian guy on the other side of that gate trying to drop the bomb into the thing. Right. Then um, Aaron Taylor Johnson and John David Washington run up on him and they're like, that's too big of a lock to pick. Right. And then Aaron Taylor Johnson gets shot, right? Right. Mm-hmm. A little bit okay. shot, yeah. Does he die? No, he doesn't no. die. He just gets shot and I guess he gets knocked out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now it's just John David Washington and the Ukrainian guy with Sator on the radio. You have this dead body at the feet on the other side of the door. Right. Right. So Sater tells the Ukrainian guy, shoot him in the head. And he's talking about John David Washington. Of course. So the Ukrainian guy pulls out his gun, goes over to shoot John David Washington. Yeah. At that moment, in reverse, Rob Pat comes up alive just to get shot again. At that time, for two questions. Well, he was unshot at that moment. Yeah, he actually... That's him getting not shot. That's him getting un... What happens is, at the end of the movie, where he tells John David Washington, I have to go back in, he's actually going in to To save John David Washington's life. To take the bullet for him. To take the bullet. So he's getting unshot just to get shot. But did he get unshot because the bullet went back through him, and that's how he's... He died again. He got unshot because it's inverted, man. I don't know. It was okay, just but, inverted. So, so if you imagine it, that's and, and that's where that's where I wait, said hold that's on. why the confusion. Hold on. Going. Wait, but at the end, he's holy fuck. Yeah, I guess he goes. He goes. Okay. No, so hold on. Hold on. I'll tell you where my. I'll tell you guys. I can explain my com- or I can explain my confusion to you, and I think it'll also make you confused. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we're we're not already confused. So so like so he inverts himself, or in the end when he's going back to sacrifice himself, right? If you imagine he runs through that tunnel, his whole job is to go to the other side of that door and get shot that way. Like, like how did he get how did he get through the door? Who unlocked the door? So that's my second question. That's, that's my paradox, two, that's right? my two questions. Well, it's not I don't know if it's a paradox, but that's my question. How does the door get unlocked? Is my first well, question. And then my second question is who is that running behind him? And I'm well, assuming that was him. That, that was, that was uh, him. Yeah, that's Rob Pat. He's running backwards because if because what happened was okay, I, him, okay, okay, he died. Well, okay. So if you imagine in in reverse uh, time, he ran out there, got in there, open, held the door as they ran out, closed the door, got shot. You know, it's like you, yeah. you, you, you know, it's very weird. 
but what what confused me um was the fact that like they all get there and he's a dead body on the ground the timing of him opening the door for right. himself essentially is essentially what you, is what you're looking at yeah 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 yeah, yeah. because because it it really li- uh, relies on the fact that if you can figure out how that door gets open that's yeah, that's the that's the crux of the scene is how does the door get open it almost makes it look like that the ukrainian opens it but then why would he so i guess it is our pat oh man like, yeah, so I mean, our yeah. our pack gets it, and he holds the door open for them, which it all makes sense. But we only see it from the rever- the you know the inverse side, so it's which, really confusing. Well, no, we see it from moment. the we see it from the forward side. The forward, yeah, but yeah. he does it inverted, which is hard for us to catch on how it exactly happens. Which is exactly. probably like, and they do the, that because at the end, that's what he's going to do, and it's gonna you know it's more powerful. Yeah. But so um, what did you guys think when they uh they recovered the bomb and they're splitting it three ways right. or no they're recovering the bomb and then uh they go for it and aaron taylor johnson pulls the gun out on them like what was your thought process at that moment because mine was like there's like 15 minutes of this movie left how the hell are they going to add this like betrayal plot point to it but it wasn't a betrayal plot point at all so why well, honestly he was like I don't, what was he going to do? He was going to kill them and then take it upon himself to be the one to hide all nine parts. Cause the, and, the then whole, and then kill himself. Yeah, but the whole point of this was he... I mean, it's why he didn't end up doing it because he right. realizes if I kill them and then I'm the one who hides all nine, all they have to do is track me and they'll be able to find all of them. I'll give it away. So to make Well, that's it, why he says that if I split it between the three of you and we all hide it, uh, if I ever see you again, I'll kill you. And then he's like, I, I will look hard for you because that is the ultimate mission. You want to hear another fucking uh, blow my mind spot plot point? Aaron Taylor Johnson's character is Michael Caine. No. Why would he be Michael Caine? You know, Aaron Taylor Johnson might be the son, though. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I think they're all Batman. Is the they're... Thing. <laughs> you think Michael Caine just went back in time because he's like, this is when England was fucking England. <laughs> <laughs> they call me sir yeah um yeah no i disagree with that i also just think it's such a woman thing to kill the guy before you're not joking but i do think it's funny that she was like i just couldn't she was like i couldn't let him die thinking he won when it's like no it's actually the inverse of that you had to kill him knowing you won. (laughs) that's like (laughs) what you wanted is like because he had fucked you over so many times he made you think like oh maybe i should leave my son to get away from him so it was like she had to kill him and he had to know as he died when when she shot him and he's kind of like gasping for breath and i was like she doesn't have the signal yet. Right. And I was like, Oh, well, okay. She doesn't have the signal, but he's, he's still not dead. He's still a little bit alive. And as I'm thinking this, she slides him off the edge. He snaps his neck on, on the way down. I was like, Oh no, fuck. He's dead, dead. And my wife is watching this with me and she, um, David knows this, but Taylor likes to call out things like thinking she knows what's going to happen. Like she's like, Oh, this is this. So when she gets on the yacht, she's already calling out. Yeah. Yeah. We get it. She's the girl who she sees jumping out of the, off the boat. And she's like over the movie at this point. She's like, yeah, I get, I get how this ends. And then on his way down, you hear the neck snap (laughs) and she goes, what the fuck? And I was like, ha, there you are. You did yeah. not see that coming. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect him to plinko down the boat like that either. I was just like, ooh, okay. That, it, it reminded me of the Titanic. It was just like... <laughs> there is a, there is a cool moment too where Debicki looks over and sees yeah. herself and she's like, it hits her. Oh, yeah. in the past, I saw myself jumping off and it's like also a relief there too that her husband she hated, I guess, didn't cheat on her. I mean, it's really for other right. reason too. But I don't think she cared at that point. I think she just realized that she is free now. Like she envied herself being free, but she's actually free. Um, do you think Mahir, like while they're on the boat, is like, "Hey, yeah, man, I mean, we got a lot of, you know, a lot of endorphins rushing right now. Do you want to, you know, maybe <laughs> like we got time? Do you know how tall that woman is in real life? Do you want to know she's... how tall that I, woman is? I, 
you asked twice, but she's six three. She's six three. And doesn't I think she plays Princess Diana in The Crown, right? She oh, does well. that too. She's also in The Man from Uncle, which unfortunately She's also in Guardians of the Galaxy Two and Guardians of the Galaxy Three. Oh, is she? She's um Oh, is she the mother she, of the mother of Warlock, the Golden Warlock. Girl. Yeah. 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 Oh right, yeah. Um so what's funny is uh Christopher Nolan did not want to cast her because he thought she was American because he saw the movie Widows. And then his wife, who I think helps with casting, she definitely works with him, was like, no, she's Australian. And she wanted to hire her because of Widows, which is a movie I think, Alan, we should do at some point. because I've I haven't seen really it good. yet. So I haven't either. I just ah. heard it's good. Hmm. Yeah, that's why we can do it. Oh, perfect. Um, <laughs> I also love the, like, it's not the very end. I want to get to that. But the last thing before we get to the, the very end is when... Uh, our Pats tells him that this whole operation has been a reverse pincer, a temporal pincer move. And he's like, well, who's? And he's like, yours. Mm-hmm. It's like a really cool moment. Oh, yeah. If whatever that means. Well, it means that they're going to break off into a sitcom and we're going <laughs> to their buddy cop movie and they, we're going to learn them. No. Dude, I'd, I'd watch that movie. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to watch this movie again. It's driving me crazy. Like, I would have. Yeah. yeah. This Alan, is... you need to send me that YouTube video that explains our, what Pattinson's doing at the end of this. I need that. I will. I will. I have a few fun facts here. Um, We're not done. He kills Priya. Yeah. I, I love the way that works out where she's like, go get her before the sun comes out. Like her son comes out and then she shoots and then he's just like, I've been the protagonist the whole time. It's like such a good mm-hmm. ending. Um, And I think it once again, it ties into the fact of like, because Robert Pattinson has all this knowledge of like the future. So he is definitely had to have traveled back really far to make this happen, whether he's the son or not, whatever, but he has traveled so far back to where he is coming from the future. And John David Washington is traveling to the present. Um, Mm -hmm. And so like in this moment where he kills Priya and her guard, it is like where we're kind of seeing like almost close to his like final form of like the guy who planned this thing to save the world. Um, like his his real James Bond moment where he's like fully confident in himself. Yeah, for sure. It's the, the return, and now he's the hero. He's the, On the second the watch of this, I noticed a lot of guys in the background of a couple of scenes that were moving backwards that I didn't realize were moving backwards before. And I think, like the when they're when they're heading to the red and blue room, Satyr's red and blue room, um when cat is being pulled into the car you see a couple people walking backwards through there but you're you at this point the audience doesn't have the knowledge of that yet mm-hmm. so of like what's on the other side of that thing um but it's it happens so quick you would you would miss the the people walking backwards and then in the airport when they're coming out with cat already uninverted you can see them in the background going into the airport oh, inverted cool. Okay. And so I think there's a lot that you can take away from like second, third, fourth second, viewings. Third, fourth viewings. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, it's oh, if any more time in life, I I want to be able to. I have to invert so I can go backwards just to watch this movie again and have time to do that. It's killing me. Oh, this is fun. I just read that um, because of the the way the days uh, lined up, mm-hmm. um, he was doing pull ups in that windmill. Right. Mm. But it happened on the same day. Remember, like later on in the movie when he's on the ship and they're going through that windmill thing? Yeah. He's doing pull ups on the ship. Yeah. He's doing pull ups at the both of himself are doing a pull up at the same time. time. Yeah. The only the only thing I can't really and this is probably answered in the movie, just like you know, this we talked about how this movie Mm. like it doesn't spell things out for you, like so it leads to needing to watch it multiple times, which I think is a good thing. But I can't remember where in time the the Stalsk scene at the end happens. Like, does that happen before Vietnam or after? Like chronologically, at least. Um, because like I think that obviously matters a little bit slightly because he dies if like the parts are still together or whatever. So I think it has to have happened maybe before, but. I mean, either way, um, yeah. Alana, are you done with fun facts? You got any more? One more is that when he's having, um, or right before he has lunch with Michael Caine, uh, he's reading a newspaper about a plane crash that hasn't happened yet, but he's the one who caused it. I think that's cool too. That's right. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 
Uh, final thoughts. Um, I loved it. I uh, I don't know. I still think it's it's like I think all of his movies are pretty great. So it's like ranking wise, hard to like know where I would put this one. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's so much better on the second watch than the first. Like I enjoyed it on the first watch, but it's like there's like a, definitely a lot of brilliance in this movie when you like kind of understand it more and more. Yeah, I mean, I think you know what I'm going to say, David, and it's going to piss you off, and I love it, and I'm going to say it. I think it's better than Inception. Alon, you don't have the ability to piss me off. Um, <laughs> you don't have the tools necessary. He tries to take it away. I, I, I still know that it, it irks him in some way. Um, <laughs> but I think it's better than Inception. Critics don't. Critics gave Inception like a 91%, and then they gave this like a 67%. But I think, I think people gave this movie, audience and critics gave this movie too low of a rating. I think it's like, and I think where it strives is that and at least for me, it's really hard to make a movie so good that you're going to want to make me watch it multiple times. Yeah. Um, usually I'm a I'm a one and done guy and then I can I can watch the the movie like years down the road when I've forgotten some details or I'm in the mood for the movie. Christopher Nolan movies, I feel like I, I can rewatch The Dark Knight every day for the rest of my life and still be entertained. I love The Dark Knight. But um this movie, I think the rewatchability is so good, and I think the critics were too harsh on it because a movie that you can make people go again and again to go see each time in a different perspective, viewing different details about it. I mean, that's a winner. That's a that's a money maker right there. Um, well, it didn't make that much money actually. But see, well, well that's what that I'm saying. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah no. The worst possible time. I did my part. <laughs> I did my yeah. part. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, no, I I love this movie as well. I thought like I I understand not everyone. It, a part of it is not everyone has an extra two and a half hours to rewatch the movie. It's already long enough, and every everyone and unfortunately everyone's attention spans seem to be going the other. They're inverted, you know, where like <laughs> they're going the other way, you know. So, but it, it's it's hard. Like I'm a you know I'm a single dad, and I have two podcasts, and I make comic books, and I'm just like I want more time to watch movies. But like I literally, when you were like, hey, yeah, here's an excuse to watch a movie. I was like, yes, okay, I got this. I can watch a three hour movie and like justify it because I let them put it out in the world and stuff um but yeah this movie totally necessitates multiple watches if like if you want to appreciate it to the greatest extent that it should be appreciated i think you know so it is i think there's some brilliance in the movie that i think uh multiple watches will definitely reveal uh i do find it i i, I mean i I don't have like a, a thorough theory on this yet because I've only seen it once, but I find it pretty interesting that he mentioned uh, Oppenheimer in this movie. Right. And, and then there was also a comment about there being 10 pieces of this algorithm right before this Oppenheimer explosion. He has 11 movies before Oppenheimer. Uh, so if you if you think of it like following was his first movie and he's like, this is me about to learn all the secrets. And then there are 10 secrets <laughs> that he learned, like he has 10 movies between op uh, following and Oppenheimer. And then there's his explosion of like, I here's my nine. It might have been nine. I don't know. I, but I remember I, I read it or I saw that and I went. Maybe back he's not counting following. Maybe he started his count with Memento and then he followed. Yeah, this maybe. Well, no, that's, <laughs> what, that's what I meant. There's. Yeah, nine. That, I think that's where I got why I skipped following because I was trying to do the counting and I was like, it's interesting to me because he mentions Oppenheimer. Now he has this big masterpiece where he's going to kill people at the end of the movie. Um, and we're all fascinated by it. So we're going to see what happens. But like I said, I've only seen this movie once. So I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just fun to watch. Well, I'm really glad that all three of us enjoyed it. Like, I think this movie is like, I think some people are going to come out of this not liking it. And I know for a fact some people came out of this not liking it. And then some people came out of this really liking it. And I kind of find it great, honestly, that all three of us kind of like it equally. Like, none of us think it's Nolan's best movie ever made. But I think all of us would pretty much give it around the same, like what eight out of ten nine out yeah, of ten it's sort fantastic. of can rating? i ask you guys i i haven't gone back and watched any of the marketing stuff because like i truly like i said i only knew like i i knew the 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 uh you know main actor and then i knew the name of it and christopher nolan so i was like how was it 
how was it marketed? Did, did you know? Did people think it was? Did, you know, what do you know about this movie going in? The trailers definitely showed you that things were moving back in time. Back, back in time, because- but you you did not get that it the whole inversion thing. You just got that right. things were moving back in time, and then some some people were privy to that, and then some people were not. And so right. then from there you were like, okay, so maybe half the world is moving through time. And so it, it explains to you very generally what this is about, but it leaves out all the detail. Okay. Cause I, I often like, I wonder when I see people like, you know, audience not liking a movie, I'm like, okay, well, how do you not know yourself well enough to go see movies that you like, you know, <laughs> right. like I, when yeah. I, when I go to see a movie, it's almost always a movie. Like it's very rarely that, like rare that I'm going to go see a movie and be like, Oh, I hated this. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, I do my math. I'm like, I just kind of trust Christopher Nolan is going to be interesting in one way or another. And I'm probably going to appreciate him, you know, yeah. but yeah. And, and like, I, I follow different directors for that reason. Otherwise I would watch a, like a teaser trailer and I'd be like, okay, I don't know what I mean, this is, or I don't know. I feel the same way about Nolan that I feel the same way about Tarantino is that if he's coming out about a, a movie about Cal Manor, do I have any interest in Cal Manor? No, but I'm going to watch it because it's Tarantino. You yeah, know? that's how I feel about Tarantino and like the Coen brothers. And I'm just like, if they have a movie out, I'm going to see it. You know, yeah. I, I might not love it, but I'm going to yeah. I'll probably like something about it. I'm going to appreciate it at the end of it somehow, you know. So. David, for the only... Just real quick, David, for the only one of us that actually did go to the movie theater and see it, apart from it being Nolan, what kind of brought you to like, oh, I'm not going to wait till, you know, everyone's safe from the pandemic. Um, I'm going <laughs> to risk people's lives and and, and go to a movie theater. Uh, what brought you like what in, in the marketing brought you to that stage? Well, I mean, I was, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, go ahead. Just I hate old people. Okay. So that was kind of the big thing. I was, I was, I was like, about to say he called you the asshole and he is attacking, but then you're like, no, 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 I will be the asshole here, sir. I'm killing elderly. Like I just <laughs> feel like I was doing my part to help global warming, calling yeah. a little bit. Um as I said, there was no one else in the theater. I wonder why. So I felt pretty safe. I was also providing money to people in an industry that was suffering. Um so I'll make that clear. Uh, so with like directors that I really love, so Tar- you know Tarantino, you mentioned uh, Fincher um, and yeah. Nolan. Anything like if I know I'm going to see it, I don't watch the trailers. So I think I'd seen snippets here and there, and they mostly used the um, the car, like the reverse car crash, like that scene um, yeah. with John David Washington. Um, okay. I remember the reverse car crash being used in the trailer and him um, getting the bullet back into the gun from the stone that was also used in the trailer. So, yeah. So, I mean, like I nothing. I just like he makes movies. I think him and Denis Villeneuve are like the two best right now at making sort of high brow popcorn movies. Right. Like yeah, that. I that, that They make super entertaining movies that are also just done very well. And so, like, especially now with, like, you know, the ability to stream everything, there's, like, certain directors you go see in theaters and certain ones that you're like, I can wait a little bit. I think Nolan is one that I always want to see in theaters. Mm -hmm. Um, I've already got my tickets for Dead Reckoning Part 1, and then I'm just going to get my tickets for Oppenheimer right afterwards. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Barbie. I don't you know. Can't, I... You can't diss Noah Baumbach and Greta Gerwig, okay? I know, but I um, I still have two kids, so it's like I got to pick and choose the ones that need to be oh. seen on a bigger screen. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. um, so out of Villeneuve and 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 Nolan, I really enjoyed everything that Alex Garland has come out with, but I haven't heard that he's coming out with a new movie anytime soon. Alex Garland, I... did you watch the last thing he made that, um, uh, men I haven't seen, I bought men. I haven't, I haven't watched men. it yet. No. And then I think he has, he has something else in the works, but I don't know. I, don't I was know. kind of like talking about his annihilation. Like when he goes, I, I actually don't know what men is about, but, um, I really enjoyed annihilation. About so men. if he could make more movies like that, please. Yes. Do that. It's about men. Oh, is it? <laughs> Um, David Fincher is coming out with a new movie called The Killer, and I'm looking oh. uh, forward cool. for that one. That seems really good. Yeah, it's Michael Fassbender's, I think, an assassin. 
All right, so let's uh, let's end this up. Uh, Anthony, where can people find you on the interwebs? <laughs> people can find me on Twitter at Anthony Lafusi. You can also find me every week um, on YouTube at youtube.com slash wehaveissuespodcast and also youtube.com slash at crit stupid. If you like Dungeons and Dragons, that's definitely a place for you to go. It's it's the most fun I get to have every week, pretty much. Um, if also, if you like bad movies and making fun of bad movies with friends and stuff, check out uh, at Good Time Bad Movie with no E at the end because it was too many characters. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know what that's like. Well, w- you can find all those links down in the description below Appreciate this episode it. too. So that's, uh, that's an easy way. Easy awesome. way to do it. Oh, thank well, you guys for having me. Yeah, no, thank no, you yeah, for coming it was along. Awesome. This I mean, was really, this is really great. This is our longest episode in forever because, and I kind of figured, yeah, 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 yeah I, I mean, well, one, yeah, when you have like a movie like this, um, and then two, when you have like a third host, like you're definitely going to fucking dive into it. So, yeah. And um, then like for, um, for any future movies that you want to come back on and do, we'd love to have you back on. Um, oh, if, and only if Anthony, we can find another movie that neither of us have ever seen before. Yes, so. For sure. Yeah, three new years from now when we complete the list. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. that list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening to another episode of I Finally Watched. This is David. And this is Alon. And I finally watched Tenet. <laughs>